welcome specs bug out survivor and we're looking at the 58 restoration now if you've missed part one that was correctly fitting the kidney pouches um, as deemed by the MOD of its day the correct fitting because what I saw on YouTube uh, just wasn't correct but I've restored mine and I've also waterproofed them and dyed them um, and dressed them full of uh, cook kit equipment so the um, 58 webbing when I received it as always it's a bit whiffy uh, probably been in mothballs and it was damp and you could tell so it needs airing out on the line first for a couple of days in the sun okay w once that's done the fabric on mine I'm gonna pull one of the pouches out I've got everything with me here um, here it is this is the ammo pouch now the ammo pouch here I haven't uh, done anything to this this was how it was when I bought it and the fabric very very soft and pliable and you might like that but uh, I want mine to be like new a little more rigid in the fabric so first of all we're gonna look at uh, starching them and getting that fabric in brand new condition I want to spray starchy inside here quite a generous amount also the outside and then absolutely soak it and let that just dry for a couple of minutes so I've applied the starch to this pocket here this is the side of it piece of wood that will just fit in I'm just gonna work it in right into the corners I have a nice flat on it here take the wood out now I'm just two applications and you can see these or stood on their own as where before these were collapsing because the fabric was just too soft so this is the results of the waterproofing dye it is dye and waterproofing in one let's have a quick go of the ammo pouch The kidney pouches have actually had a few coats. Um, ammo pouches, about three coats, and the belt only two. The yoke, just about two, I think, coming on to the third. Now, what I'm using here is something called Simply It's Outdoor Fabric Paint. I think it's called Simply Spray. I've got mine in black and shake this up and spray it on. I'm just using a paint pad just to get it into all the corners and work it in. Now the nozzle comes out pretty quick on mine. So I don't want it I don't want it going on too thick in one place. It makes a more even coat, just rubbing it in. There's places under the lid and then these folds where I can use this paint pad to get behind all the creases and push it into the seam and the stitching being quite generous with this one we don't want wet shoulders so this is the result after about two coats and three coats as you can see it's just a 
give it an extra bit of colour in and waterproof in. And see, it doesn't go on like a spray from a can. It does at first, and then the nozzle starts blocking, and you have to get something like this to carry on. I spray directly onto the paint pad and then onto the webbing straps nice and thick not going to be sparing on these general I'm reasonably happy with it for the purposes and requirements I need. Okay I started uh, building the belt one two three four I happen to know it's five either side for me five of the waistband fitting holes and this band goes over to meet the buttle here and because I've sprayed it up, it's made it a little firmer to put on. It will go though. I need to do this on both sides of the belt, there and there. And then a simple case of trying it on for size. Now I have left a bit of room inside here. And this extra space here will accommodate a large sweater or your smock and it comes now time for the ammo pouches because the cut here is on the diagonal when you squat straight it will tip to the side so if I squat like this it's angled away from my leg so it doesn't rest on my leg and it shouldn't be digging under you uh, rib cage here so you need to find a place now I know where mine fits it's again five holes over for me and we'll put this on we're going to build up something known as the skeleton order and it's called that because it's the bare bones of your webbing build it's the skeleton order okay now these are called your c-clips and on your belt are these little pockets here you're gonna have to excuse it's not dirt under my nail it's that damn die um, but the c-clip will fit into these pockets here now I'm gonna put a c-clip here I'm gonna miss one and come to the next some people say it's easier putting this on the top ones first or the bottom ones or you can just put one on then the other I'm going to start with the top ones and the C-clip just needs coaxing in to that little little uh, sleeve there for it and I'm going to bend the belt back and there's one at the bottom to put in as well actually quite rigid now I've uh, sprayed it up it just needs fiddling about with okay that's the first one on count an equal amount of space into left and right put your pouch in the same place just put the other one on and we'll uh, start on the yoke now as I Put this on click it into place there you have it it's resting off my leg and it's not digging into my rib cage here now adjusting this around forward and back is a matter of your personal sizing now the webbing comes from behind through and up like that to meet 
this section here. Now you notice I'm doing all this out in the field. This should be a task you should be able to do uh, quite simply. So at this point I would urge you to make sure that there are no kinks or twists in the webbing straps before they go into the buttle system. Click the belt on. So this here now, two pouches and the yoke like this is the skeleton order. The bare bones of the 58. So bare bones, skeleton order. Uh, now in these pouches here would originally have had your SLR mags in there. But for me, the 58 bottle, I've got water in this, fits in. So I know the front two pouches there are for ammo. I do know that. The fact that I'm putting water in my ammo pouches is entirely for my own convenience. I have ready water uh, right either side of my pocket which is convenient for me. Now the original water pouch would have had a bottle system like this and would have sat next to the ammo pouch. Something like that and your water would have been square with your hip but now my water is actually on my leg when I need it and that just leaves the kidney pouches which is really one been split into two and if you don't know how to fit these and I mean correctly go to part one and you'll see how to fit them as deemed by the MOD now, I'm not going to show you this all over again because it's already been done on part one so I'm just going to fit the kidney pouches which sit uh, at the back either side of your buttocks I've also got the 58 pat respirator bag uh, I've also got my frog as well it's got a bowie in it at the moment if you want to restore a system this 58 respirator pack was difficult to source in one of them for sale for 90 quid uh, got mine for seven So the 58 respirator I wouldn't take out on a camping expedition but just because we're doing this episode uh, I thought I'd show you what I have in my We could go down the road of a bit more bushcrafty with uh, the 58 respirator bag with uh, the Kelly kettle, including a pan set and the burner unit and the actual kettle itself, wood burning water boiler. Um, there is an episode on this if you haven't seen it. So a good little bushcrafty bag that for your 58. I think the 58 webbing is really great for the bushcrafter. And removing the respirator pouch for me for camping suits my needs. I want to show you something else while I'm here. The original water pouch which I haven't restored because at the moment I haven't a use for it. I just want to show you because it might be of interest to you if you've got a different cook system to me. The jet boil pot. I mean I haven't got the neoprene sleeve on mine. Let's try get that in here. I mean look at that for a perfect fit. And I'll tell you something else I do know is if you turn this upside down it fits over your Surveyor 123R stove like that then you can put all that into one little ammo pouch 
of course a lot of people like the gas canisters and things but it all does fit in the original water pouch so I'll put that to one side so yeah I've come back to the sports to 533 now it is heavier than nearly all the stoves I've got but uh, its benefits outweigh the weight I think but because I haven't got the weight of that stove now in my backpack it's become a viable option for um, road walking camping uh, because I just haven't got that weight in my pack and I forget how much it is uh, in weight when it's full of fuel it's it's not light it's not a lightweight system but I haven't got it in my backpack everything is in webbing yeah so I've decided um, that the Kelly kettle which I house in the 58 respirator is going to come off uh, this and go on to a different webbing belt even wearing the original here now and that's what used to be on this that belt but uh, over the years that belt has shrunk don't know what went on there I'm gonna boil everything up in here to make a kind of boil in the bag dinner that back in rice pud please be rice pud I'd be happy if that was right oh and it is so let's get that down warm up some rice pud One of my homemade MREs. Um, it's one of my rice puddings with cranberry sauce. This is the kind of meals I'd have camping. I just make whatever I want and put them in little uh, coffee replacement packets and that in a nutshell is how I'm going to use the 58 pat webbing fully restored waterproofed dyed and as you can see I'm using stuff sacks uh, in the kidney pouches keep everything uh, even more watertight but the coating we put on should be waterproof anyway. The kidney pouches holds quite a good size stove, good size billy tin, and I don't know why I've just picked that straight up. That was hot. Uh, so for anyone, and you're bound to get them especially in the comments now saying these are a load of rubbish and should have got yourself 95 pat or whatever it's not I got all this including backpack and poncho roll water pouch the belt two ammo pouches the kidney pouches at the time for about five five or six quid I think uh, and I certainly couldn't uh, get an airborne webbing for that especially if uh, we're all on a budget like a lot of us are and another one of the complaints uh, with these webbings is that they were never waterproof and uh, when they got wet they were stinking everything inside would be wet and but as you can see I've waterproofed them give them a bit of dye 
everything's in the stuff sack. Now these will only be used now for the purposes of uh, carrying my billy tin, my camp cooker and two litres of water and I've got my uh, bowie knife with me on mine also. If I was to restore them uh, to museum standard the actual um, bayonet frog is a canvas uh, similar to the same material as pouches and there is also a pattern 58 pistol holster as well might be handy to put something else in uh, I also have the 57 L-shaped torch, you know, like that, like that as it would be, and that fits into the yoke, so I'm turn it on as I'm walking, but that runs on old-fashioned halogen type bulbs, you can't get them anymore, so I'm converting that to LED. So the whole 58 now has been upgraded. I mean, never again will these pouches ever hold SLR mags and things like that. It's just been restorated by me like this for the sole purpose, putting the stove in, the billy tin in, and two liters of water, just so I don't have to carry that weight on my back in my pack. You know, people are going to put in the comments about 58 webbings, a load of old tap. It makes you wonder why they watch the episode, doesn't it? Moan over. Join me soon where we'll be talking about why I've gone back to the Sportster 5 double three by Colbins that's later on in the series until next time take care of yourself and I'll see you out there Bingo. Oh.